Al, what is it about free will, which to me seems so blatantly obvious that I can do whatever I want to raise my right hand or left hand, but why do some philosophers think it's an illusion? That's a, a great question. Why do philosophers think, some philosophers, that free will is an illusion? Well, I'll give you just a bit of background so you can see what's going on, and then I'll tell you. Then I'll answer your question. So, we have to start with this notion of determinism. And determinism is the idea that a complete description of the condition of the universe at any point in time, together with a complete list of all the laws of nature, mm -hmm. would entail all other truths about the universe, including all truths about everything you'll ever do. Okay, that's determinism. So now we have a premise. Either the universe is deterministic or it isn't. Now suppose it is. Then some philosophers say, well, you can't have free will in that case because you could never have done otherwise than you did. So that means the universe will have predetermined all conditions so that everything that I do could not have been otherwise. That's what some people say, yeah. All right, so that's one horn here, that determinism is true. Then you couldn't have done otherwise. The other horn is, well, suppose determinism isn't true. Then what do you have now? Well, they say randomness at the point of decision. So now you could decide this, you could decide that, um, but which one you decide is a matter of chance or luck. It's as though you have a little roulette wheel in your head and it's got different spaces designating different possible decisions and other outcomes. It spins and the ball lands in a decision for going to Chez Pierre for dinner tonight. But it could have landed in a space for a decision to go to Cool Beans for dinner tonight. And so that's not free will either. That's what they say. So they say, um, either way then, there's no free will. If determinism is true, there's no room for free will. And if it's false, uh, you're not in control enough of what you do uh, in order to be acting freely. But still, people feel as though they're free, and so the claim is, well, that feeling is an illusion. You know, there's, there's no free will there at all. So it doesn't matter what you think about the structure of the universe. Is it totally deterministic by the laws of physics? Or is there openness for whatever reason, probabilities of quantum mechanics or whatever that opens the universe, but still, if that's random, there's no free will. So either way. Yeah, that's the argument. Um, so now the way- It's a pretty good argument. It's a, it's a very interesting <laughs> argument, yeah. Now the way most people who don't buy the argument attack it is they attack one horn or the other. So there are philosophers called compatibilists. Mm -hmm. And compatibilists say that uh, even if determinism is true, people can act freely, that free action doesn't require that you be able to do something other than what you did, given exactly the same past and exactly the same laws of nature. What compatibilists think is that what you need is to be responsive to reasons in a certain way, so that if the reasons had been different, you would or might have acted differently. Even though there was no possibility that the reasons were different based on the universe that we live in. That's right. <laughs> right, given that past yeah. and, and given those laws of nature, uh, the reasons are what they are. Yeah. But, if, but they if they would have been, been different, different, then I would have made a different decision. That's right. And that's, that's compatibilism. That's compatibilism. So what they're after is a certain kind of mental capacity. You can mm -hmm. absorb reasons, weigh them, assess them, come to a decision. You know, it's good enough for free will. Okay. okay, so that's one way to go. The other way to go is to say, no, you're right, free will does require that determinism be false, but the falsity of determinism doesn't just put you at the mercy of chance or randomness or luck. Um, you're still enough in control of what you do to act freely. Uh, that kind of response is called a libertarian response, where libertarianism has nothing to do with political libertarianism. It's a philosophical view. So the pro-free will views then divide into those two camps. Attack one or the other of these problems. That's right. One, one kind are called compatibilists, the other kind libertarians. Now, my own view about this, but actually this makes the battle twice as hard, <laughs> is I say, um, well, 
I'm just going to be agnostic about whether determinism precludes free will. So I'm going to leave compatibilism open. Um, but I also want to see how well the libertarians can do in defending their view. My own view uh, is this. Either compatibilism is true or libertarianism is true. And actually, my view is a bit more subtle than that. It's that that either-or proposition um, is more credible than the opposing proposition, which is no free will either way. Free will is an illusion. The libertarian part of the project, I, I think, is more interesting. So you can sort of see this problem about luck or randomness. Um, so what you're thinking is, OK, well, let's get rid of determinism. And now, when I get to the moment where I make a decision, and let's make it an important decision, um, accept this job offer or reject it. And they tell me I've got to decide by midnight tonight. Mm -hmm. I haven't made a decision yet. I have to decide and send the email. Mm -hmm. And here I am. I'm not sure what to do. Um, and I decide to reject it. But everything being the same right up until then, in another scenario, same past, same laws of nature, uh, I make the opposite decision. I decide to accept it. I decide to reject it. Um, you know, it looks like a matter of luck. Um, so what are you going to do about that? How do you save libertarianism? Uh, the answer is complicated, but I'll just do it bit by bit. So think about how um, dice work. Your next toss is independent of the outcome of your last toss. What you did in the past with your dice, as long as you didn't make them Ill illegal in any way, weight them or whatever, shave them down, um, your future tosses are independent of the outcomes of your past tosses. But decisions are not like that. Decisions you made in the past have a bearing on how your life goes. You can learn from the consequences of those decisions and adjust uh, your thinking about the future. So past decisions have effects on future decisions. Now, if we have this indeterministic kind of system um, where agents can go, people can go one way or the other, but they can learn from their past experience, they can actually shape the probabilities of future decisions. So a person who has made some bad decisions in a certain domain of his life, maybe business, um, can learn from those decisions and change the probability that he'll make bad decisions about that in the future. So I say that if you look at people just at moments in time, just snapshots of them internally, this luck problem looms large. But if you consider what people can do um, to change their luck, as it were, uh, they, they start looking more impressive and more like they could be uh, free agents. But the bottom line is that if determinism is right or determinism is wrong, either way, you say, we have a free will. The free will may be a little different in each case. Yeah, it may be a different, well, it will be a, a different kind of thing uh, in both cases. And the claim really is that if you look at all the arguments against free will and then look at this picture of mine, this picture does better than the arguments against.